Guys, we're talking about good works, dead works. I believe for the end time. I believe because you're a wise builder, you're going to build right foundations. You're going to take time. Because you're a wise virgin, you're going to take time with Holy Spirit. Wise builder with the word, wise virgin with the spirit in Jesus' name for the extra oil. In a time when you don't need it. You don't need it now. So, um, so you can just carry on until you have a crisis. But that's the foolish virgin. That's the foolish builder. But the wise builder will build now before the storm comes so that the house will stand and people look, will look at your house and they will know it's because of Christ. And you had the wisdom to build a life with foundations when it was not necessary. May you be that man. May you be that woman in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ephesians 4. So we're talking today. We, starting, we started with A, A, B, C, D, F, 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 and today we are at understand your uniqueness understand your uniqueness what are we talking about my brother my sister you are unique there's nobody like you in on this whole earth never was never will be even your fingerprint that is you cannot believe it eh? but in the uniqueness of who you are first of all you need to know who you are in christ so first of all there's a unity and out of the unity of who you are, you will find the uniqueness. You will find the uniqueness. As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. What am I talking about? A life worthy of the calling. How can you be worthy of the calling? You can write there... If you live a life worthy of the calling that God has for your life, to do the good works that God has intended for you to do, not for anybody else, not for the other billions of people, but for you to do. To walk worthy the calling, that worthy means I have respect for what God has called me to do. Right there, respect. Respect. Phone. Okay. Next time. Okay, so worthy the call. If you are walking worthy the call that God has called you with, it means, first of all, you have respect for the one who called you. There's somebody asking you to go and work in, uh, on this farm for a week. You know? Okay, yeah, I will see if I have time. But you know, if it's God manifesting to you in your room uh, tonight and say, thou shalt work one week on the farm, and the next morning you will be here. Uh, Hello. But you need to see God in the spirit. You need to get, see God in the spirit. You need to see God through his word and know what he has called you to do, the works that he has prepared for you long in advance for tomorrow. And if you have respect for God, you will do it. And that is you walk worthy. You are worthy of the calling that God has given you. The second point is why worthy? Because you don't deserve it. You don't deserve to serve the living God. You could have served Baal or Muhammad or one of those guys, some demonic forces. You could have, could have served some, that whole freaky thing of the ancestors where you actually don't speak to an, other ancestors. You're just speaking to demons, presenting themselves as your ancestors. Why, why are you here? It's just God's grace. It's not because you are, you are worthy of it all. Hello? But... To walk worthy, the call is I have respect for the one who called me. And I'm grateful because it's just because of God's mercy. So there's a gratefulness in my life. Hello? In that, do you understand? And that I know I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. It's just because of who he is. So if you understand who you are, it's because of his grace. If you understand you have the opportunity, the opportunity, the Voorrecht is de privilege. You have the privilege. You have the privilege to have a calling on your life. It's a privilege. It's not because you deserve it. Not at all. You have the privilege of serving the living God. You have the privilege of doing a work with him and doing a work for him. Through the good works God has prepared for you for tomorrow. 
Amen. So understand this, but to, to get into the right attitude for this, we see. Two, be completely humble. Humble. Now, my brother, my sister, every demon, all those millions of demons, they will bow their knee, they will confess that Jesus is Lord. They will be humiliated. And the people walking in the flesh will be humiliated in shame. But there's a humble in beauty. And that is you in worship. When you humble, you surrender your life in the beauty of holiness, in the beauty of loving your God, in the beauty of having a relationship with God. Everything will submit to the King of Kings. Everything is put under His feet. But there's somebody in front of his feet humbling themselves because they love him. And that's you and me. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Under, you, under his feet, every enemy, every, put of, every piece of rubbish in your life, let it be under his feet. Because he's the enemy of God. That flesh in you is the enemy of God. It must be under the feet of Jesus. But in front of the feet of Jesus, you are like that lady, the sinful lady, but was... His feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. Once in worship I said, God, how, how can I come close to you in such a way? And God said to me, as you touch your brother and sister with your words, with your love, with your hands, as you touch them, so you touch my feet in worship. As you love them, so you love me. As you serve them, so you serve me. Because we are the body of Christ. You come and you want to wash the feet of Jesus. You know, then you go to people and they are dirty. Because the feet of Jesus was dirty. That's why it had to be washed. Not dirty of sin, but you understand what I'm saying. And so when you come closer to people and you must serve them... To get the dirtiness out. Hello? What are we talking about? I need to do it as if unto the Lord. And I need to respect the body of Christ. And I know in my calling, I come with humility. I do it as if unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Completely humble and gentle. That gentleness has to do with I'm teachable. That gentleness has to do with being teachable. In the gentleness, it's not like you don't stand on your right. You don't defend your, your opinion. It's those guys. It's the meek that will inherit the earth. Gentleness and meekness the same. Inherit the earth. Not, not all the property belongs to you. But you will have your destiny. You will have your destiny. If you stay teachable, humble and teachable before the Lord, you will have the awesome destiny that God has planned for you on earth. Really, you will receive it. But it's when we become stiff-necked and hard-headed and I don't know what. All that rubbish. So worthy of the call is when you have this attitude. You are teachable and you come with humility. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient is not, I will not kill you today, but maybe tomorrow. Patience. Hello. Okay, guys, if you can play in a different place, that will be nice. If somebody can help there. Okay. What are we saying? Patience is based on the word. Uh, patience has to do with the future. Hello. How can you have hope for the future? How can you be excited about the future? Because if you are in the word, everything will fall. Heaven and earth will be shaken, but the word will stand for eternity. Patience is when you jump into the word, you jump into that what will stand forever. And then you find patience for the future. You can be patient because you know the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. God has awesome plans for your life. And you stand on the promises of God. And in that place you find patience. Attitude of worshiping. Attitude of being teachable to change for destiny. An attitude of standing firm on the promises of God for the future. Amen. You are still with me. Okay. That grandma, she just gave up. She prayed, she prayed, she prayed, and then nothing changed. She just gave up. 
But if there was the patience with the promises, and she prayed till the day that she died, that prayer is your inheritance, that, that prayers will rain down in your life and on your life. If you respect your grandma, if you respect your, your pa, your ma, your whoever, even if they made the biggest mistakes, you will inherit your destiny. That's a promise from God. You are with me? Okay. Bearing with one another in love. This bearing with one another in love is only if you are in the love of God. If you only because you know God loved me so much that he gave everything to sort out my mess. Then you can bear with the mess of others. But if you don't understand God's grace on you, you cannot give grace to others. Get a revelation of how God loves you, and then you will be able to love others. Struggling to love others is because you don't know how to receive God's love and how to love Him. Get that right, and your love with people be will become pure, and not with motives. Amen. We are talking about understanding your uniqueness. If all come to the unity unity of this attitude when you come to the unity of this attitude then you will come to the uniqueness of your calling but first the unity the unity that stealing is wrong the unity of you need this humility everybody for everybody humility that's a that's a given that's a, that what is what we must come to the oneness a oneness in christ are you with me okay let's go Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. The unity of the Spirit. What is the unity of the Spirit? That is, I want a unity with you because I respect the presence of the Holy Spirit. Not because I agree with your opinion. You have certain opinions, I have certain opinions. It's not the unity of all opinions. Ah, oh, come on, give me that, those people. There's an opinion the same, but how to get there or how to do it, that's miracle upon miracle. But unity in the Spirit is, is like if Holy Spirit is going to use you and you're going to raise people from the dead, I will not become jealous. If you speak and there's a wisdom coming forth, I will not be jealous or feel inferior. When you pray for, for, for God's provision and suddenly, boom, you just get, got this house and this excellent job and just excellent car. But I'm praying for five years, ten years, and I've seen nothing. How? Unity in the Spirit is, Holy Spirit, whatever you wanted to do for a blesser. Holy Spirit, what you want to do in my life, show me how you want to bless me in, in what I, you have for my life. My life. Are you with me? Oh, there's one guy, he's in the, he's in the central, what do you call that thing again? The, the airport, the guy that, uh, with the control that, that says, okay, you airplane, you can land, land. you airplane, wait, you airplane, yes, 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 that. Air traffic control center, something like that. Now some churches, some churches in the spirit they are controlling certain things that's happening in the spirit because they have this Powerful, powerful stature. Now you look at that church. Oh, look at that church. I wonder what the pastor is doing wrong. <laughs> because there are oh, 20 people in the church. No. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, those 20, they are like in that control center. Yeah. You think of that big Boeing. Whoa, look at that church, you know, coming down. If it isn't for that 20 that's in the spirit that pray for the open heaven. But that church must not grow. Because if there's a hundred people in that control center camped in there, there's going to be a hell of a mess and there's there going to be crash, 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 crash of airplanes. But there's a uniqueness in their calling. And then there's other churches, there's a uniqueness about church planting, or there's a uniqueness about teaching, but each one must be where God has called them to be. You're not in the church because you like it more here than in another church. Oh, Lord, help you. You are here because you believe God said you must be here. 
And if you believe God said you must be here, you know what's going to happen. Oh, that's the problem. It will be tested. It will be tested. So you are here because, no, not some of the ladies. I've seen in churches, you know, some of the ladies because the, the youth pastor was not married, you know. And then the youth pastor got married and a quarter of all the youth group is gone. I've seen that. I, oh, man, that's wrong. <laughs> so you are in a place where God, God, God has called you to be there. If you like it or not, you are here because God said so. And then you will fulfill your unique calling and you are walking worthy the call. And you will have excellence in your calling. Amen. Are you still with me? Please. But the unity in the spirit is I acknowledge that God is going to use you. And when you raise people from the dead, when you, people are going to see because of you laying hands on. When you're going to pray for blessing and people are going to be blessed. You pray that people will get, give birth and then you pray for 20 and at least 10 give birth nine months later. And, hello? And then you, you must go and you must encourage the older, old, old aunties. That's your calling. You just go to the old aunties and pray for them. <laughs> and they just moan and groan and moan and groan. And you must just encourage them. <sighs> and you feel, what a calling. <laughs> you know? But that old aunties, if you tell them, don't be lazy. Don't wait to die. Don't moan and groan. But pray. You are the big, the big missiles, you know, here at the back. And you bomb there in front. So that the young men can go. They can go. They can make the difference. You have that calling. You're like the Moses sitting on the rock. Oh, they are just sitting there. All the old aunties and warm uncles, they're just sitting there. But let their hands go down. You're going to lose the battle. Because Moses sat there on the mountain with his hands high. Even he had two people helping so that his hand is up. When his hand was up, Joshua in the battle, he won. When your hand's going to, he lost. He's losing. No, no, he's winning. And you don't know what's happening in the spirit. Don't be foolish in how you look at people in their calling and become jealous because of immaturity. We are there. Unity in the spirit. Right. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Because there's one body, one spirit. You were called to one hope. There's one body. Okay, there's one body. But, but in the body, there's different members. But you don't know that there's one body, the body of Christ, if you try to be the whole time like somebody else. Because, in other words, if you are the hand, and because I'm not the feet, I'm not part of the body. Inferiority. Don't find yourself in Christ and be the hand. Oh, the hand can do all of this. The feet must just walk uh, in the dust and all the. Uh, nobody cares what the feet can do. The, the hands can do 300,000 things. You know, write and this and praise and that and draw and make music and, and all these stuff the hands can do. And the feet? All these fingers can do a lot of things. But all the toes? They're you know, just doing going, 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 you know. Don't go pay yourself. Tell your neighbor, that will be pathetic. <laughs> okay. So what am I saying? What am I saying? Understand there's one body. But the one body will only function if you understand your uniqueness. You try to be somebody else, that's not unity. That's not oneness. Unity is connected with uniqueness if you understand your the uniqueness of your calling then you will bring unity but if like we said in the past if the lung feel oh i don't like it because it's you, know, you just go cruising on cruising on not lazy cruising on and then the, these the other guys they just have this thing <laughs> the heart Man, they have a dynamic. Yeah, I must be part of that group. To do, to do. If God has called you to be part of the lung, you go and do this. Everybody? So
some men, they think they're more like this, and some women, they think they're more... Doo -doo, doo -doo. Then you must find one another, okay? But if the lung feel inferior, and the lung wants to do this also, he wants to become like the heart. I want to be like that guy. You know, he's just like dynamic. <laughs> Go and do this for three hours. Go and try it. You're going to die. <laughs> Hyperventilating. Hyperventilating. You, you're going to become crazy. <sighs> That's your life where you compare yourself with people and try to be like them. Instead of finding your uniqueness. You are freck, man. You are dead. You are dying in what you're trying to do because you don't understand what God has called you to do. Let's stop that. Let's say, stop it. Now say it with attitude. Stop it. Okay. Tell your flesh that. Right. One body. One spirit. We talked about that. One hope. There's one hope. Why must he say there's one hope? At the end of the day, our hope is Christ. Amen. But in the body, hope is manifested in different ways. Hope is you going to somebody and just say, remember God, he will never leave you. And you walk away and you gave that guy hope another guy he must like a pastor speak an hour before they have hope another one just come and bring coffee and say enjoy you are precious God is seeing your situation and that's it another guy he must walk the streets and for 20 people he must tell them God has a plan with your life hello other guy he must go and visit the old aunties the other guy you must give away like I told you and nobody did it. Give away 20 bananas and tell everybody your grandmother's grandmother was not a baboon. But you can eat a banana. But remember, you were created in the image of God. You are beautiful and your grandmother's grandmother's grandmother was also beautiful. Don't believe a lot of stupid things. And you give him the banana. He will never forget it in his life. But you gave that man hope. But he will not come back as a dog or as a whatever. Some... Are you with me? Next one. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is all over. He's over all and through all and in all. Okay. One Lord. What does that mean? You better submit. You better submit. There's one Lord. There's only one that have the final say in everybody. But, like we told the creative guys, the innovators, the guys that like entrepreneurs, you need to submit 20 times more than the other guy. The other guy, in his simplicity, he's doing one thing at the job. He's praying in tongues, yes, for the people that he speaks to, he's encouraging them. But there's only one thing he wants to do, and it's his role. It's according to what God has for him. So in a certain sense, he does not have to think a lot except say what the Holy Spirit is saying to the people and do your job for the rest of your life. He's content and he enjoys that because you throw the seeds in people's lives whenever they meet. But this other guy, he must think out a lot of things he, of what must happen. What must, he must find new solutions. So he's thinking a lot of things. But he has 20 ideas. Tomorrow and the next day another 20 ideas. He must submit 20 times more. There's one Lord, but that guy needs to submit 20 times more than that lady. Do you understand? Because you must bring what you have under his feet for him to have the final say. So you will experience God's authority in different ways. But at the end of the day, you must make sure it's all about one Lord, Jesus Christ, in what you do. Amen. Different calling, different good works that God has prepared for you every day for you to do. Okay, one faith. There's one faith that God will do it. But there's faith for one guy to walk on the water. There's faith. Like I told you, the one about the mountain goats. Remember? The guy is high in the mountain in Afghanistan. Who remember that one? One, two... Three, I forgive you in the name of the Lord. You know, how must I feel? Afghanistan, many child trafficking. 
many orphans, many child trafficking, a lot. One of the worst places, child trafficking. So a lot of children flee into the woods. And so many missionaries, they would, would go high in the mountains in the monasteries, you know, they're high in the mountains, and they will take the children in, they will raise them up in Christ, they will provide for them. Actually, major, major, nice, excellent ministry. But the one year, they, the snow came too early, so they didn't have enough provision. They didn't have enough provision for the winter and not enough wood. So it would happen in the evenings that they would lay in a bundle and then the one on the outside will lay inside again when they are cold and getting warm. Lay on top of one another, next to one another as a group. But then there were no food. And the one child told the missionaries, now it's the missionary speaking, uh, in a conference, he said, and the child says, but, but you told us that they prayed for manna, they prayed and there was manna, and there were quails. They, so can we pray for bread and that God will provide bread? And he said, the missionaries look at one another and said, yes, we can pray. <laughs> and halfway through the prayer, the one the child stopped and said, no, but we don't want bread, we want meat. <laughs> okay. They prayed for me. And that evening, the missionaries didn't sleep. <laughs> but there was a, one faith. There was a faith in those children. There was a stressing in the missionaries. <laughs> and the next morning, they woke up. They got outside. And there was an avalanche in the mountains with the snow. And 20 mountain goats were laying there. They didn't even need a freezer, you know. <laughs> And they had more than enough of meat for the whole winter. Ah, oh, come on, man. Are you with me? But at the end of the day, it's one faith. It's one faith. Okay, God will help us. Hallelujah. One baptism. You are baptized in Christ. I'm not going to go now with that. One God. He, there's only one God at the end of the day. You're struggling with certain gods. <sighs> because the one that you focus on the most... That is the God in your life. If you focus on your hurt, your hurt is your God. You focus on your opinion, you focus on your stress, you focus on your emotions. Now I feel like listening to the word. Now I don't feel because I'm tired and I don't feel like it. So I cannot focus on the word. And the Lord says, yes, I understand. What you're going through is has so much more authority than me and my word. Uh, no, no, it's time to grow up. So each one need to, need to deal with his own demons, need to deal with his own gods, that's idols. But at the end of the day, it's only in the name of one God that we will all have the victory. Amen? That is even in the good works God has prepared for you. When you do the good works, it's not just to do the work, but through the good work, many times you will be delivered from a lot of rubbish. Do the good work and go and wash yourself in that dirty water seven times to the grand official. And when he listened to the lady that was a servant, he said, just do it. And when he did it, he was healed. So many times through obedience in what God asks of you, you will see miracles. You will see miracles. Amen. Okay. But then he says, but. But to each one. Now he talked about the unity, unity. First about the attitude in your calling. And then about the unity, unity. But then he comes to, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. That means you have a certain amount of grace. You have that amount of grace. That means all of you going to heaven, half of you going to hell, three quarters of you going to hell. No, 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 that's not the grace. Grace is not just to miss hell, like we said. Grace is God's enablement. Amazing enablement that saved a wretch like me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing enablement God has given you that you can be children of God. Amen. So this grace is God's giving you an enablement that you just know, you just know how to fly that airplane after being taught. This other guy, no, but that guy is not clever, but that was God's calling for his life. 
The one guy is caught and he must study seven years on, at university to become a specialist um, in psychology uh, uh, or psychiatrist. Some must do seven years. So I, I don't have the opportunity to go to varsity. Maybe it's God's calling that you don't waste your time. For the one, that's God's purpose. For the other one, it's a hell of a waste of time. Because you need to know what you need to know. Because many CEOs of, of big, 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 big businesses didn't even do grade 12. It all depends on the attitude and how you walk with God and what God is telling you what to do. You need to find your unique calling. Are you here? Go and sit with God and dream with him and find out what is it that God has for you. But because if you have a puzzle piece in a big puzzle, but if you think you must be the picture, it's not going to happen. The one has a picture, but it's one big hamorce because it's just a lot of tucker, a lot of branches, pieces of wood, whatever. It looks like a hamorce, but you know, it's a mossy nest. What is a mossy? It's a... Is a sparrow nest, you know, and the sparrow nests look like a hamars. It's just Yamakar. This is the one puzzle piece. Looks like Yamakar. And that puzzle piece is just blue. Blue. It looks boring. She's just in the sky, you know, blue. And that one is a piece of a house, and that one is a piece of a teeth. <laughs> but what am I saying? Don't try to be like the blue. Don't try to be like that. Don't try to feel you mustn't be so dear Because if the, in the bigger picture, there's a beautiful bird that's sitting in there because you're part of the nest, the, in the puzzle, in the picture. The big picture. Build the picture that God wants you to build with the people around you. That's why you need to be in the right place with the right spiritual house where God has called you to be. Because only there your puzzle piece will fit in. Don't compare the puzzle pieces with one another. Don't try to be like the other one. Just see how you need to fit in for the bigger picture that God has for his kingdom, for Bluefontaine. Amen. You are still here. Next one. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Everybody say different. different. Same. same. So different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Different kinds of working, but in everything, there's the same God at work. Oh. So if you're going to respect the pre this presence of the Holy Spirit, you better go with what he has for you. Unique. Unique in what has called you to do. Good works that he has prepared for you in advance long before the foundation. There at the foundation of the earth. When he said there will be a Peter. Then he said that is what he will do in that year, that month, that day. That's crazy in that sense if you think about it like that. Different kinds of gifts but the same spirit. And you must be careful. You, there's this, oh man, I don't know what that is in English. There's people, they say, alles met die helm gebore. Wat is dit nou weer? Laurens, jy is nog hier. Ah, sorry, praise the Heere. The guy that is with the helm gebore, what on earth is that in English? I don't have a cooking clue. Peter? Ah. It's somebody that is born in such a way, he thinks he's seeing a lot of demons, uh, he thinks he's a lot of spirits. But distinguishing of spirits is one of the gifts. And that is, when somebody would speak, they speak the gospel, but you know it's not God speaking. It's some other demon speaking through that guy. That can happen. You need to know. There just can be such a lot of deception out there. And if you don't understand to be sensitive in the spirit and to grow in the different kinds of gifts, people will just come in. But you will just, if you... Growing in the gifts, you will just know this is not God. This is not God. Are you with me? One day, with, I just got this word of knowledge of, I sat in a bus with a, guy, a lot of guys in a, in, a, in, a, in a bungalow. They mocked Jesus a lot. And I said, when we go there, there's just going to be demons. There's just going to be demons. And the guy looked at me and said, like... But it just came to me like a word of, a word of knowledge. 
When we got in the bungalow, this guy that was like, you know, like people will see, say that he can speak to spirits, you know, like which, which craft, which doctors and that type of things. He came to me and said, Domini, 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 there's a lot of spirits all over the place. And that's when this guy gave his life to the Lord. God wants you to walk in the, through the gifts of the Spirit. Are you with me? Where you must have authority in the Spirit to know what is happening in the Spirit. Allow God to do that you know, through you, please. Next one. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. For that, what is the good? The, the common good is the bigger picture. For each one, everything is given the way it must be given. Now we can say, no, uh, how can he get that job? And why cannot me? I, I, I stand by faith, I'm faithful, and, and he gets this major job, and then he sent out, and this and this. Respect God's calling on your life. Walk worthy the call. There were 12 disciples. The one, gone. Okay, hang himself. There's 11. And you know, the guy that spoke the lot of things that is written down, that was a lot of nonsense, was Peter. Not that Peter, Peter, the apostle. I mean, Peter said, let us build three huts. Let us build three huts. But he didn't understand what he was saying. Peter said, nobody will kill you. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Peter said, I don't know him. I really don't know him. No, I don't know him. Even though he said, I will never deny you. That guy. That is three out of ten for what he said. The other disciples may be all out. Eight out of ten. Seven out of ten. Eight out of ten. But who gets the opportunity after the, the baptism, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Who gets the opportunity to stand up and tell all the people, this is what the prophet Joel said, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit and this will happen, that will happen. And so I'm telling you, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and we will receive forgiveness of sin and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And 3,000 come to repentance. Who gets that opportunity? The guy that spoke all the nonsense. That's unfair. But the other apostles, they were, they were mature. It wasn't about performance. It wasn't about performance. What, what about me? You know, what about me? I was more faithful. I didn't talk a lot of nonsense like that. And now he can open his mouth and he can speak and then oh, all this happened. That's not right. That's not fair. You know? Jesus with the 11, you know, this elite group. And then, uh, there he goes with the three again. We are all serving him. We are all faithful. But Peter, James, and John, there they go again. Jesus go with the three. Peter, James, and John. Where, where's the lucky guys? Where's the favorites? Where's the Jesus' favorites? Peter, James, and John, there they go again. That's when you look in the flesh. That's when you look in the flesh. And what is happening and what is going to happen? There's the 12. But there, what about the woman's rights? There's Mary and Martha. They followed him as much as the disciples. They worked harder and served more than... But you know, it's all just about the men. Where's the book of Mary? You know, Mary 1 verse 5. They were the human rights, the, the woman's rights. <laughs> but they understood something in the spirit. They understood it was all about Christ. It was all about Christ. Even with the slave. I mean, Jesus said, the apostles said, Slaves, we will set you free from this masters. No. He said, slaves, be good slaves. <laughs> slaves when you are a slave serve as if unto the Lord if your masters are bad just walk away no if your masters are bad serve even more beautifully so that they can be ashamed and realize you are serving it you are doing this because you serve Christ then you are free you are free 
the one that is a slave that is set free not a slave anymore of that master that's not the guy that is free it's the one that is doing whatever he does as if unto the Lord many billionaires are so demonically bound so many of them so many actors so well known and then they commit suicide why then they run all in drugs not all in Jesus name but they run into the drugs. Why? Because they have all the fame. They have all the beautiful houses. They have all the money. Why? Because they realize this was, this isn't it. I was running for it. Now I have it. And it's not it. Because the it is not in it. It's in, in the kingdom. Be careful what you run for. Right. Last one. Just as the body, the one has many parts so many parts from one body so it is with Christ yes you have that scripture next one so if the foot should say because I'm not the hand I don't belong to the body it would not for that reason stop being part of the body Uh uh-uh you have that scripture we talked about it already you just wanted to write it down the eye cannot say to the hand I don't need you and the head cannot say to the feet I don't need you guys if there's not people that you work with, uh, that you walk with, and you st- please pray for me. Please pray for me because of this, this, this attitude where I'm struggling with this. That you say I'm struggling with, with, with patience, or I'm struggling with lust, I'm struggling with inferiority, I'm struggling with shame, with things that happen. You need to walk with those people. And you must be available for other people also. How are you doing? Not to be the counselor but to be there for one another. Are you with me? The one that is superiority of, uh, I don't need you. And you don't say that I don't need you. You just go on with life. You are not there for others. But you know, when you, if you want to be having them there for you, you be there for them. Otherwise it's parasite. Are you with me? But you're flowing through, you're flowing through, and you're coming on a Sunday, and you look very holy, and you're this, and you're that. But you're not opening your life. You're not walking with brothers and sisters. You're not walking with a, you cannot just walk with the one that encourages you, that pray for you when you're in a crisis. You must walk with somebody that can tune you also and say, stop that rubbish. And then you stay in that relationship. When you are that type of guy, then you're not a cancer cell. The one that's doing his own thing and he has his own attitude. And while I'm speaking, you are talking and thinking about other things. That's demonic. So don't let demons speak to you when you hear the word. Have you, have you seen that? When somebody preaching or when somebody is busy, but your head, especially then, is busy with other things. Hey, why you allow the voice of demons in your, in your mind? But when it's the rugby or the soccer... You don't, don't think of, I wonder how my granny is doing. <laughs> you are focused, man. Because why? It's important for you. So put your heart and your priorities right in order. So that when you hear the word, you are there, you are there, you are there. Amen. So that there would be no division in the body. That all parts should have equal concern for each other. We spoke about that. Write that down. And the last one. God given different gifts to equip his people for the works of service. Uh, Guys, you get the equipping this today. And when you read the word and you are equipped and you are trained. It's so that you can do the work. You can do the work. Hello? So that you can do the work that you're supposed to do. Are you with me? Are you with me? So that the body of Christ may be built up. When you work, it must build up the body. You cannot just build your business. You cannot just do a job because you must do a job. It must build the body. Can you say that through what you do this week, it's going to build up the body of Christ? If not, you're not working with the Spirit. You're not doing the good works that God has prepared for you. Then change that. Change that. Until we all reach unity in the faith, that's a lot, and in the knowledge of the Son, and become mature, attaining to the full, whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Oh, that's a lot of words. But at the end of the day, it's just talking that you will grow up. 
you grow up that when through your life more of Christ is seen. That what you build, people can say, she's okay because she's doing it with God. He's stable in his emotions, even though he's supposed to crack up. But he, he's stable because he's working, walking with people and he's leaning on the, on the presence of God and the grace of God. That's building the body. That is Christ being seen through you. So we are trained. We are doing the good works. You are following the calling in your life. You walk worthy the call because you have respect for God. You are grateful for, for the privilege, the privilege, the privilege, the privilege of doing work for him and with him. And because of that, more of Christ will be seen. Why will it be great in the nation? Because Christ is seen through the church. If Christ is seen, if the church grow up, and not fight one another. The body fighting one another. That's a hell of a sickness. That's a very dangerous sickness when the body fights one another. That guy is going to die. But why the body of Christ? We must fight one another. Have issues with one another. No, that's demonic. That's, we, we turn our back on that rubbish. Amen. No, we're going to fight one another and respect the Christ in one another. So that more of him can be seen. Tell your neighbor, amen. amen. Father, come and help us. We need you. We need you, Lord. Come and do that, what you want to do in and through our lives, please, Lord. Forgive us for running many times in our own thing. Forgive us, Lord, for that where we can see and then we are easy to judge, easy to have opinion. But Holy Spirit, show us who is this one God that has the final authority help us to see the hope but in that all of that that we will not compare ourselves with others no jealousy no inferiority no superiority no demonic performance I just do my job so that I'm not in trouble God break us set us free from that demonic fellowship with demons in Jesus name but we don't want to grieve your spirit but we want to walk in the spirit we want to walk with your spirit Come and do that for every man, every woman in this place, Lord. Come and do that for every man, woman in this place. I trust you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen. Let it be so.